On this edition, we look at life after professional cycling with Christian Meyer in Girona. The reason we open a cafe is mostly for my passion for coffee. I'm not racing anymore, but I still feel like I'm kind of in it. We talk to the original pioneer of Colombian cycling in Europe, Gio Jimenez Ocampo. It took me about three years to win a race here as a professional. That is proof that you have to keep on believing in yourself. But first, Orica Scott at Trofeo Alfredo Binda. Cavirate, Italy, the adopted home of Orica Scott. Antipodean riders move here to hone their skills and don't look far to test them out, with Trofeo Alfredo Binda taking place on the very same roads. Obviously, you know, as an Australian rider, Europe is kind of where it's at to develop as one of the world's best cyclists. The Australian, uh, I guess, team has been based around, you know, the Gavarate region, um, I think for the last 12 or 13 years. So previous to that, they were based further south. The Australian Institute of Sport set up a base in Gavarate, and it's just become a really, I guess, great place to base yourself as a cyclist. You know, the training's great. You know, we're right near the hills. Uh, there's lakes around. Um, great coffee, great Great food, uh, just a really nice atmosphere to, to live and train in. We're all on Duolingo trying to pick up all the basics and yeah hopefully I think it's pretty important that we can engage with the community around us and yeah try to live like locals. <laughs> I've experienced living by myself um, on the French team before and that was really challenging um, so living with Australians and your teammates is awesome. Um, yeah, you're never really lonely, but we also give each other space as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's fantastic to be based just out of AIS um, in Gavarotti. There's also dietitians, nutritionists, physios, and we've also got our coaches there as well. Um, so Gene Bates took me out motor pacing. He's my coach, so it's yeah good to have him there keeping an eye on me and my training. And yeah, it's just, it's great to have some Aussies as well, just around the place you can really feel like home. Normally the spring classics, you normally prepare for like freezing cold rain. Um, but yeah, like yeah, a few years ago it was snowing. Um, this year it's 22 degrees, which is the warmest race we've done this year um, in Europe. So it'll be important tomorrow, just getting on top of all the electrolytes and and hydration and then making sure we take as, as many bottles in the race as possible. Like it's not super hot but it is a bit of a shock compared to, to what we were racing um, a month ago. I think you see every year like the strong girls will end up in the, in the final and it's, it's also a bit longer now, it gets longer and longer every year so um, that's a, a thing I like. It's also a thing really good from the UCI that they uh, said that our races can be now up to 160 kilometers. Uh, this one is 130 something. Scott, who were very animated in the first round. I think that's always, you know, a challenge when, you know, Australians first come to Europe. Firstly, just, you know, the size of the bunch, the intensity of the racing. You know, it's it's really scary for us when we first come to Europe. We're, we're used to racing in, you know, a, you know, a bunch of 50 or 60 is big in Australia. So that's certainly a challenge. And maybe sometimes it takes, you know, a couple more years for an Australian rider to develop and get used to that racing. I think it's safe to say you can, uh, you're free to go on the attack now. Let's make the race a bit harder. Okay, Jess, you got 12 seconds out there. 12 seconds. Jess is on her own off the front. Go. We really want to bring the numbers to the front of the race. Um, and take control of the race and I think we're strong enough this year to do that. Um, there's no team that really stands out this year. Um, so I think, yeah, we can, we can be the team that stands out and, and takes it in the races. Okay, time gap's going out. Yes, the time gap is going out. They're going to the east for a second. Just keep tapping away at it. Keep tapping away. Good tempo. We're willing to sacrifice ourselves for each other and and for you know, the strongest rider on the day. So I think we really have stepped up 
this season, I feel, and um, there's a real, I guess, excitement amongst the whole group that, you know, we, we are right there in the final and we can really go for it and, and go for the win. And, you know, we have points in the race where we know we need to be there and, you know, everyone's there, everyone's committed. And when you have that feeling in a team, then, you know, everyone's really excited. We call it, you know, getting goosebumps, you know, you have that moment. And, you know, that just is so motivating when you see that. But in the end, yeah, it's like the climb. That's where usually where the, the race is split up and yeah, where it's happening. So you need to be as fresh as possible on that last climb. I think really we stepped up the stepped up this year with with being as a team, like being more in front and being more together, um, more girls in the final. We wanted to be aggressive, um, we wanted to come as far into the race with as many numbers as possible and I think we did that and yeah, kind of with three laps to go, we wanted to be aggressive, we didn't want the sprint finish. I tried to make up some places. Yeah, I should have let you out. But I think we should all be pretty proud of how we raced today. The last three World Tour races, we've really been up there um, and really made the race, so I hope we can keep, keep doing that and I'm sure we'll see a win soon. My name is Christian Meyer and I was a professional cyclist for 10 years and now I own in Girona La Fabrica Espresso Mafia and the service course with my lovely wife Amber. Girona is a great place for riding as a professional especially because we have such a variety of trainings. We have mountains, so we're at the foothill of the Pyrenees. We have the coast, which is only an hour ride and we have good coffee. This is La Fabrica. So I just finished racing the Tour de France for the first time and I was at the beach with my wife and we were sort of talking about things, life, you know. And we just sort of reached the pinnacle where Amber was like, look, I think I, I need to start doing something. She's also a very ambitious young lady. And we had sort of had this idea always of doing a, a cafe. You know, we didn't really know yet exactly where, if it was going to be back in Canada or, or, or here. And we'd sort of by then settled into Girona quite a bit. You know, we'd been staying here all year round. We didn't really go back to Canada anymore. So we decided, okay, let's, let's do it here. Let's take the plunge. Originally, the idea was to wait until I'd retired. But we thought, why not do it now? I mean, we can do it. And, and so we just jumped in. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. I was speaking with David Miller about this the other day, and I think we have probably exact number, I'm not sure, but 80, 90 professionals living here during the season. And it's been changing a lot in the last few years. Like when I first got here, you know, we had uh, Garmin Slipstream was the team here, the base. And most of the guys lived here because they wanted guys here for logistics, obviously it was easier. And, but there was maybe 20 pros, 30 pros, and in the winter there'd be three. You know, like everyone would go home, and it was really a sleepy town in the winter. And, but things have changed a lot, and we get a lot of young guys now, a lot of young people, uh, a lot more, not only world tour, you know, pro Conti, Conti level riders, which is really, really neat, because you know, I see a, a really big mix of people who are really blossoming, you know, and it's, it's quite cool to see. I've lived in Girona for uh, about a year now. Um, um, we've been staying here for longer in the winter periods, but since a year now we live here. Uh, it's a good atmosphere, of course it's good training as well, but uh, I think for me personally, uh, especially for the family, it's a good place to be. A lot of social uh, possibilities, also for my wife. Uh, kids go to school here, so uh, they get a good education. And, uh, so I moved to Girona in December 2014, so it's two years, two months, and it's really, it feels like I've been here for 10 years, settled in, feel right at home. It's quite strange how much it's actually changed in the last two years. It feels as if Girona has gone from the place where the pro cyclists live 
to the place that cyclists go to. It's really sort of stepped up a level. We now have um, physios and media people who are unattached to teams who've moved here. In the last year, all of a sudden, there seems to have been a shift. You notice it when you walk through town, when you're out riding, and it's, it's beautiful to see, especially for the local economy. The reason we opened a cafe is mostly for my passion for coffee. Amber's really passionate about hospitality and, and being with people, and, but for me it was really about the coffee. So then the next step for me was roasting the coffee ourselves. So from that we opened Espresso Mafia, which is just down the street from here, which is on one half roastery, and on the other half we have another coffee bar. And after that, we opened the service course. We were all these sort of little things, be it like, you know, bike rentals and services from, from guiding, but also little services, you know, that on your vacation are kind of hard to organize. You know, laundry, uh, washing your bike, you know, someone fixing your bike. These sorts of things actually in Girona Center were not very easy to find. It is by far our biggest space and was our biggest investment. But I think people appreciate it when they go in and, and see the details and, and see what we're, what we're trying to offer there. The transition was very fast. Like I don't feel like really like I've retired, I guess in a way, because you know, I was so busy in the last part of the season. You know, like I, I continued to race and do the Revolution Series and some of these races. But like November, October, November was really busy for us with the service course and it was really quite intense. It's kind of the neat thing about having the shops is because I still see a lot of the guys. I'm not racing anymore, but I still feel like I'm kind of in it. You know, sometimes they come in and I don't know that they've just won on the weekend, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, you see everyone and, and it, that's what's really nice about it. In a golden age for Colombian cycling and their fans with bona fide superstars electrifying racing on all terrains, it would be easy to look back at the Colombian legends of the 1980s as the pioneers for this new generation. But look back further and you'll find Giovanni Jimenez Ocampo. My first bike was a bike English bike, Raleigh. Those were my first steps. In 1961, Fui campeón nacional en el kilómetro contra el reloj y entonces ahí me salió, me, me salió la propuesta de que si quería venir a Europa, a Alemania, a correr y yo, ¿por qué no? Claro, en ese momento ningún corredor había salido a Europa y cogí mi bicicleta y me vine para Colonia. No tenía casa ni tenía nada. Pero fui, me presenté a una fábrica, una fábrica en Alemania. Yo estaba muy motivado y, y tenía el coraje, el coraje de hacerlo. Y quería, quería, quería eh, progresar. Fue, fue bastante duro porque claro, ahí dejé mis amigos, dejé mi familia, dejé las costumbres en Colombia como es la comida, la música. Me quería escribir en un equipo y me dijo el, el señor responsable, me dijo, hombre, es que en Colombia, allí, allí se corre en bicicleta. Me decía, ellos en Colombia, que se corría en bicicleta y siempre en los años 50, eh, en los años 50 siempre hubo la vuelta a Colombia y la gente eran miles y miles y miles. La Federación Colombiana de Ciclismo no estaba inscrita en la UCI. Entonces yo no podía tener una licencia de Colombia, sino que tenía que tener una licencia de la Unión Ciclística Internacional. Y esta, este, esta licencia, desgraciadamente, me, lleva, me, me, me costaba mucho, mucho tiempo. Me, llevaba, me llegaba casi a los seis meses para tener una, una licencia y a los seis meses ya, claro, la temporada ya estaba comenzada, me, me tocó muy difícil adaptarme. Y 
me fui quedando, me fui quedando y de Alemania llegué a Bélgica en el año 68. Mon papa était dans la direction d'un club d'amateurs euh, néerlandophones, flamands, mais un coureur colombien, c'était exceptionnel. Il n'y avait pas d'autres colombiens. Moi, je ne connaissais pas une autre nationalité qu'un flamand ou un francophone. Donc maintenant, il y avait un colombien qui venait de l'Allemagne qui devait venir rouler dans le club de mon papa. Et... Y rulé bien, y se te, se te engué. Cuando yo conocí a mi esposa, y ya, claro está, eh, todo cambió porque ella siempre me ayudó mucho y siempre me ha ayudado. Y claro, yo creo que sin ella no estaría yo aquí. Dans le cyclisme, il y a des champions, il y a des sub-champions, il, il y a des gens qui doivent aider les autres. Il avait un rêve. Moi, j'aimais bien le cyclisme et je voulais aider à réaliser son rêve. Il avait déjà fait tant de choses pour arriver jusqu'en Belgique. Alors, je trouve qu'il méritait un peu de, de soutien. J'ai eu beaucoup beaucoup amis, beaucoup amis. Muchos entusiastas del ciclismo. Bélgica es un país donde gusta mucho el ciclismo y a mí la gente siempre desde el principio me han ayudado mucho y siempre tenía alguien que se ofrecía para llevarme a las carreras. Entonces, yo, oh, Giovanni, ¿dónde vas a correr mañana? ¿Dónde vas a correr esto? Bueno, que hay... Que hay Maurice que quiere ir contigo, que hay Jean que también quiere ir contigo, entonces a mí me, me tocaba escoger el chofer para ir a las carreras. Como no había muchos extranjeros, il fallait être 12 coureurs, dos extranjeros, no era pas fácil para encontrar una pequeña plaza. Y bueno, él era solo, él era colombiano. Esa fuerza de voluntad que tenía y esa fuerza de voluntad me ayudaba a hacer los premios para, para poder subsistir, porque como corriendo solo no tenía un salario mensual, entonces el salario mío me lo ganaba yo con los premios que daba la federación, la liga, entonces yo tenía que, que estar entre los 10 primeros, obligado. Il allait au championnat, il était le seul représentant colombien. Mon frère, il devait aller faire le technicien, faire le, avec les roues et tout ça. Et il n'avait pas une équipe comme toutes les équipes nationales qui avaient leur entraîneur, leur technicien. Leur... Lui, il devait faire tout lui-même. Ça, c'est de mi cuenta. Et la, la, la Fédération Colombienne de Cyclisme, pues non. Es difícil, es difícil para, fue difícil para ellos también. Son países muy jóvenes, o sea que no se podría, no, no se podría directamente venir a, a Europa. Hay que, hay que estar más estructurado para poder viajar. Il n'a pas gagné la prime. C'est lui de Kerk. Oui, Van Impe. Van Impe. Meer. Willems. Hemmer Freiders. Wart Janssens. Wart Janssens. Freddy Martens. Champion du monde. Je me suis passé presque trois ans pour gagner une carrière ici, comme professionnel. Eso, eso prueba que hay que, que hay que creer en sí mismo. Y eso fue una satisfacción inmensa porque, claro, hombre, yo gané, claro. Pues un colombiano que gane aquí en Bélgica, y bueno, en ese entonces fue una, una cosa rara, ¿no? Rara. Ahora ya los colombianos ¿sí? ganan en todas partes, ya. ¿eh? Thank you. 
estamos pasando una época maravillosa con el ciclismo. Siempre ha sido típico que el colombiano ha sido muy bueno, muy buen gran, eh, gran, gran pador en la montaña, pero nunca hemos tenido un, un sprinter como lo que está sucediendo actualmente con Fernando Gaviria, que es un muchacho que está haciendo una carrera fenomenal, tiene 22 años y ya le ha ganado, a, por ejemplo, al Marca Vendiz. A él le gusta el pavé y está motivado para, para esa carrera y quedó en, varias veces en el pelotón puntero, o sea que el muchacho se puede mejorar mucho y puede ganarse algunas clásicas. Con Nairo Quintana, ella, Nairo Quintana es, es, es un fenómeno. Ah, no, no es únicamente Nairo Quintana, sino que hay, hay Chávez, hay, hay Rigoberto Durán, hay, hay muchos, muchos corredores buenísimos que están dándole buen nombre al país. Je voudrais, on est retourné il y a quatre ans, on est retourné en Colombie, c'est, c'est fantastique, moi j'ai bien aimé et puis je trouve qu'il est très modeste parce que quand on va là-bas, il y a beaucoup de gens qui le connaissent encore. que saben que yo fui el primero, claro, eso hace ya tanto tiempo, hace ya eso, ya hace, hace 50 años, <ríe> ese récord, bueno, pues nadie lo, lo, va, lo va a quebrar. Yo fui el primero y quedaré el primero. That's all for this week. Join us next time on InCycle, but until then, keep up to date with us across social media.